stories with the, of course, top story on everyone's plate, and that is food and the attendant prices in the market. We have the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, uh, Mr. Abubakar Kiari, saying that as part of plans to boost food production, rice farmers will be incentivized beginning next week. Well, during the sectoral debate on agriculture in the House of Representatives, the Minister attributes the scarcity of food to the menace of smuggling. I'm not too sure if we have 5,000 tractors working, fully working in Nigeria. We need over 72,000 with what we have in terms of arable land space. We, at the level of our, the ministry, we have asked, we have had a joint meeting between uh, NASA, uh, NATFUN, and also Bank of Agriculture to see how we can help and uh, incentivize our farmers by giving them access to low interest funds. I'm not too sure if we have 5,000 tractors working, fully working in Nigeria. We need over 72,000 with what we have in terms of arable land space. We, at the level of our, the ministry, we have asked, we have had a joint meeting between uh, NASA, uh, NATFUN, and also Bank of Agriculture to see how we can help and uh, incentivize our farmers by giving them access to low interest funds. As for goods that are imported, illegally imported as, and are seized, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has directed that we should dispose of this item through direct sales to vulnerable Nigerians. As for goods that are imported, illegally imported as, and are seized, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has directed that we should dispose of this item through direct sales to vulnerable Nigerians. As for goods that are imported, illegally imported as, and are seized, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has directed that we should dispose of this item through direct sales to vulnerable Nigerians. Well, that's the director of the Comptroller General, I should say, of the Nigeria Customs, uh, saying that 120 trucks have actually so far been seized for smuggling, amongst other things, uh, yesterday. Well, let's move on now. Speaking uh, of smuggling, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has intercepted 21 food trucks heading to neighboring countries. Announcing the seizure in a statement on its X handle, the anti graft agency said the items were heading towards Njemena in Chad Republic, Central African Republic, and Cameroon when operatives of the EFCC Maiduguri Zonal Command intercepted them. The seizure is coming on the hills of a rising cost of food items in Nigeria, with inflation reaching 29.9%. The cost of living reached rooftops, prompted pockets of protest and looting of food items in trucks and warehouses in some parts of the country. Now, it's not really unusual for the everyday Nigerian, this next story, but it's somewhat embarrassing for the National Assembly, as there was total blackout in the upper chamber on the first legislative day of the week, and this unusual situation compelled lawmakers to temporarily stay away from the chamber. And after nearly half an hour, the president of the Senate, Senator Gosula Papi, arrived at the chamber, apologizing for the delay in commencement. They've assured us that before one o'clock, the lights will be okay. If it gets too hot, then we may have to adjourn for a while to allow them to conclude. But I think they are working on it. So I apologize for any inconvenience. So for the first time in a while, the plenary concluded in about two hours with a promise to investigate that power outage. Just last week, by the way, the AEDC had named the National Assembly clerk as one of those who haven't paid their bills to the tune of 1.9 billion naira. Let's bring you more stories now. Uh, we turn our attention to the MSMEs. President Bola Tirubu directed that 200 stores be 
granted to 200 small business owners at the revitalized Adire market in Ashiro Ogun State free of charge. And that's for a period of one year in addition to a grant of 150,000 Naira each. The Vice President Kashim uh, Shatima announced this during the launch of the second micro, small and medium enterprises clinics in Abeokuta, where Governor Dakwa Biodo also announced the award of 2 billion Naira conditional grant to 12,000 businesses in the state. Well, now to that story, which you may have just seen, it's uh, on security. And the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General uh, Tarid Lagbaja, has been speaking about the security situation in the country, but particularly some of the rumors making the rounds. And he says that the army is resolute in defending the nation's choice of democracy as a form of government. Addressing participants at a seminar on career planning and management organized by the Army Headquarters, General Lagbaja says the Army has no plans to truncate democracy in the country. Permit me to seize this opportunity to reiterate that the Armed Forces of Nigeria, particularly the Nigerian Army, has come to terms with the country's choice of democracy as a preferred system of governance. We are therefore agents of democracy and have no desire to truncate it. The Nigerian army will continue to defend our constitution and not suspend it for whatever reason. Permit me to see to some travel advisory next for those moving around Lagos particularly. As a result of the ongoing repair works on the third mainland bridge by the Federal Ministry of Works, the island Yano bound lane will be closed to vehicle traffic from 12 a.m. today. Just to be clear, that's Wednesday the 6th till 12 noon tomorrow, Thursday the 7th. So motorists plying that route are advised to use alternative routes previously provided uh, during this period. However, the Yano Uwuru inwards island bound carriageway will remain open to motorists heading to the island during this period. Well, let's talk business now. The world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Binance, says it is set to end all its Naira services in Nigeria by March the 8th. That's just in two days. But this follows a recent clampdown by the federal government on its exchange of already alleged involvement in several financial issues, particularly the country's lingering forex crisis, as well as tariff financing. Now, a statement from the company explains that it will stop supporting Naira deposits on its platform with effect from today, March the 5th. However, Binance says despite the discontinuation notice, users of its trading platform can continue to make use of other services and products for other cryptocurrencies that are available. And outside the country, Ghana's president, Nana Kufuado, says he will not assent to an anti-gay bill until the Supreme Court rules on its constitutionality. Earlier, the finance ministry warned that billions of dollars in World Bank funding could be lost if it became law. Passed by MPs last week, it imposes a jail term of up to three years for identifying as uh, LGBTQ+, and five years for promoting their activities. The Supreme Court challenger says that there was no quorum when the bill was passed in the proposed legislation, which is called the Proper Human Sexual Rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill, was backed by both of Ghana's main political parties. But a lawyer, Richard Deliskai, who has filed the application with the Supreme Court, says there were not enough MPs in the chamber when that vote took place. And now to sports news. Well, we have uh, Ofiong Edem becoming the first athlete to earn Nigeria a medal at the 13th African Games in Ghana. After finishing in top three in the women's single stable tennis event at the Accra International Conference Center. Although the official opening ceremony is set to hold in two days' time, that's on Friday, the table tennis event has already served off at the multi-sports event. The Spain-based star lost in the semi-final to defending champion Dina Meshref of Egypt 4-0 defeat to settle for a bronze medal just like she did at the 2019 edition in Rabat, Morocco. I feel super excited. I am so proud to be the first person to win a medal in this game. It's been, it's been tough and I really put in my best and I had this opportunity to play well because we were in world championship and this helped a lot and I want to thank the Nigerian Federation for making that possible to go to world championship because that was that served like a training tour and 
that is the reason why I did very well here. The Egyptian, the reason why they are at the top, they play a lot of tournaments. We don't have that opportunity, but nevertheless, I am always very calm whenever I'm in a tournament. I don't feel stressed for anything. I just try to do my best. Well, the Egyptians, it would seem, didn't quite let our athletes through because Africa's highest ranked table tennis player, Nigeria's Aaron Okwadri, clinched silver in the men's single table tennis event, also at the same competition, the African Games. Okwadri lost out to Egypt's Omar Sar 4-3 as Egyptian reclaimed the title which he surrendered in 2019. Now, Arano's search for his first gold medal in the men's singles continues after the loss in the final. I imagine a lot of sports lovers asking the Egyptians to let our athletes go.